My name is Shannon Morgan, and welcome to Bigfoot Encounters Narrated. In February 1981, in Scott County, Iowa. My first two encounters with a Bigfoot happened in Eldridge during the first two weeks of February 1981. I was a paper boy for the Des Moines Register. I would usually start my route at about 5 o'clock in the morning. About a week prior to this incident, I started having this feeling that I was being watched and even followed, though I never saw or heard anything up to this point. On this particular morning, about halfway through my route, I came around the corner of 5th and Donahue. Riding my bike loaded with newspapers, I looked down and I saw this trail of very large footprints in the snow. I got off my bike and knelt down to take a closer look, thinking that this was some kind of prank. I even counted the number of the toes, five on each foot, and it looked just like a human footprint, only much larger. The prints were about six to eight inches wide and about 24 inches long. I remember I slowly stood up and I looked around and I noticed that the tracks came in from the northeast side of the woods and then it cut through people's backyards and exited the southwest side of town. I remember feeling very alone and scared out of my mind. The worst was yet to come later in the week when I had to deliver the Sunday paper. After school that day, I went back and I followed the track northeast to southwest all the way through Eldridge and across a small park called Elmer Green Park. It was here that the reality of what I had just discovered really started to sink in. When the tracks came to a four-foot high fence on the other side of the park, you could see that this creature stepped over it like it wasn't even there. I followed the tracks all the way back to the city of Eldridge sewer treatment ponds where I usually hunted rabbits. The tracks followed Hickory Creek around behind the sewer treatment ponds, and it was here that I stopped following them out of fear because I was alone. That night, I went out collecting money for the route, and I made it a point to go to the location where I had originally found the tracks that morning. I remembered it all like it happened yesterday. I looked at my watch, and I noted that it was 10.30 p.m. when I went home to bed. The next morning, I got back to the same location at about 5.30. And to my shocking surprise, there was a new set of tracks in the snow, following the original set in reverse. Now, I was really terrified. My first thought was I had to get out of here, and my second thought was that this thing is following me. You see, the path that this Bigfoot took paralleled my newspaper route, and I lived across the street from the park, wherever it stepped over the fence. To say the least, I was scared out of my mind. I remember that this happened on a Wednesday, and the return tracks had to have happened between 10.30 Wednesday night and 5.30 Thursday morning. Needless to say, this creature remained nearby in the area. I remember the rest of the week was uneventful, with no more new track sightings, but I did feel like I was being watched and followed. Then that Sunday, my father helped me deliver the Sunday papers because they were so much bigger and I couldn't carry them all on my bike. So dad drove the car while I ran them up to the door. Everything went just fine that morning and I was feeling pretty secure because I had my dad with me until we got to the last house on my route on the south side of Eldridge behind North Scott Junior High School. I remember running up the paper to the front door and tossing it just a little too hard. It hit the front door with a bang, and as soon as it hit the door, the noise must have startled the Bigfoot because it let out this horrifying scream. It was just around the corner of the house, between the house that I just delivered to and the house next door, and behind it just where I couldn't see it. I knew that it was that close because of the scream that it let out. I have never been so terrified in all of my life. I ran as hard as I could back to the car, slipping and sliding on the snow and ice, and I hit the car so hard that I actually shook it. Me running into and hitting the car scared my dad, but when I screamed, did you hear it screaming, Dad? He said he didn't, because he had the heater blower going full blast and the radio was turned up, so he didn't hear it at all. I couldn't believe it. I decided right then and there in that morning that I would get out of the newspaper delivery business. 
I turned the route over to another kid a couple of months later in April. I'll never forget the look of those tracks, or that scream from hell that it makes. It all seems like it just happened today. I never saw it during this encounter, and for the next week or two, I still felt like I was being watched and followed. The weather conditions during the week were bitter cold. I remember it was between 0 and negative 15 degrees the entire week. There was little to no wind, and it had about 8 to 12 inches of snow on the ground. I never did see the creature during this encounter. I only saw the tracks in the snow, and I did hear it scream. I did not notice any smells, which would make sense because it was winter, and the air was cold and dry. It wouldn't be until the fall of 1986 when I had my second encounter. A Bigfoot ran across the road in front of my car one night while driving down a gravel road in the southern Rocky Mountains of southern New Mexico. During that encounter, I had a girlfriend with me that saw it too. That week and that scream live with me until this very day. Every time I go hunting, I keep an eye out for them because I know they're in the area. The Bigfoot sighting in Buchanan County, Iowa, 2006, is about 30 miles northwest from an area that I hunt. In July of 2006, a farmer who raises cattle and rents pasture land on the farm that I hunt heard a horrifying scream while checking on his cattle. He said it gave him the willies, and he said that he got out of there as fast as he could. I haven't seen any evidence of Bigfoot activity in the area that I hunt in, but I have my suspicions, being that it's only a short walking distance in Bigfoot terms from the Buchanan County 2006 sighting. Just like many of you who have seen, heard, or found Bigfoot in its tracks, I too have been made fun of and laughed at when I told friends or family. I know that I'm not crazy. I have a college degree and another one on the way. I served in the U.S. military and I was honorably discharged and I have never used any illegal drugs or abused any drugs in my life, nor have I been drunk a day or moment in my life. I know what I saw, heard, and found. And now I know that they really do exist. I don't need any further proof. On the 13th of November, 1982, in Warren County, Iowa, my brother-in-law and I were hunting geese in a harvested soybean field east of Carlisle, Iowa, about a mile out of town. We were concealed in our blind along a fence line. We saw movement to the east of us, and what we saw was just like many pictures that we had seen. The creature had to be maybe six and a half to seven feet tall, and it was bent over. It was black and walking faster than we had ever seen any human walk. We left our blind and walked over to where we saw it, but the ground was frozen, so we saw no tracks. The area was vacated in the 1960s as part of the Red Rock Lake Project. We agreed not to say anything, because we didn't want to be called crazy. On July 15, 1983, in Greene County, Iowa, I was sitting on my back porch steps, waiting for my boyfriend to stop by after work. I knew he would be there any minute, so I was watching the road, waiting to see the headlights of his truck. Because at that time of the night, there was little to no traffic. Instead, I saw an extremely large creature walk across the road about a hundred feet from me. It crossed the road very near the street light, which illuminated it very clearly. It stood about seven feet tall, had medium to dark brown hair covering its entire body, and it was walking upright. It was very broad through the chest, and it was near enough to be able to see the muscle outline of its right arm. Seeming to be in no hurry, it walked across the road and disappeared behind the tall shrubs that lined my neighbor's driveway. My neighbor had hunting dogs that he kept penned up, and when I lost sight of this thing, apparently they did not. The dog started barking so ferociously and making such a racket that I ran into the house and woke my mother up, which one never did, especially at this time of night, unless of course you were dying. She got up and came to the porch with me, she heard the dogs, but she did not see the thing. Neither did my boyfriend, who arrived just moments later. Had it not walked near the street light, I'm not sure that I would have seen it. Behind my house is a cornfield. There was a stream not too far away, and there was woodlands in the area. I've told a few people about what I've seen. Some believe, some don't. 
it doesn't really matter to me whether they do or not, because I know what I saw. The neighbor's dogs were going crazy at night, and afterwards, on certain nights, my dog would awaken me by staring out the window and barking loudly, with all the hair raised all over her body. If you have an encounter you'd like to share or have narrated, email me at bigfootencountersnarrated at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for listening.